film a video about a book I read. Do you want to film a video? Yes. Okay. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess. This is Nigel. And welcome back to, I don't even know what I was going to say. So we are doing this kind of old school. I've got my mic and I'm on my phone, front facing camera. I hope it's fine. But I came upstairs and realized I left my camera downstairs and I could not be bothered to return down there. So I'm going to go ahead and film this video. Also, my phone is dying. So hopefully I can be concise, right? Yes, we're going to try to stay on topic. So today we are talking about Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iyimide. Is that how you say it? Okay, that's... This might have been a bad... Okay, that's how Nigel says you pronounce it. So I'm gonna put this here. So briefly, I'll start out with a um, non-spoiler section and then go into spoilers because there's not a lot I feel like I can say without being spoilery. There's not a lot I can say without being spoilery. So Ace of Spades is a YA thriller and it is a debut author. Um, she is black and from the UK, but the story follows Devon and Chiamaka. They are two black students. The only two black students at this elite private school and um, they're going into their senior year. Devon is a scholarship kid. He kind of keeps a low profile during, trying to get through school to hopefully go to Juilliard. And Chiamaka is like a queen bee. She's very rich. Everyone knows her. They're going, so this is their senior year. I think I said that. What? This is their senior year and they're both made prefects. So they think the year is off to a good start. But then all of a sudden this random anonymous phone number starts sending out text to everyone in the school with information about them that may or may not be true and they call themselves aces so they're trying to figure out who this person is loose plot of the story so everyone has been really talking about this book giving it a lot of praise saying you know it's oh it's really fucked up i saw a lot of great commentary on it before i started to read it there are also two videos that i watched that will link down below one was a replay of a live stream by jonathan i believe is his name and i cannot remember the other person's name i'll put it here but it was another video so those were two videos that i was watching while i was trying to process my thoughts also shout out to bring your own book podcast which they invited me on thank you so much and I, we talked about this book and so i feel like some of my feelings may have changed since then so don't like if you listen to it don't hold me to that it's been a while i talked about the book with them like the day after i finished it so now it's been a few weeks i'll link that podcast episode down below and so overall it's really hard for me to say i enjoyed this book um because i never want like i wanted to read it in the beginning but then after starting it i never wanted to pick it up because it made me feel so uncomfortable because like nothing good ever happened to them especially devon he was already a scholarship kid you know he comes from a you know a bad neighborhood and has already gone through so much his mom's working multiple jobs and just bad thing after bad thing just kept happening i was just so sad and i just like didn't want to pick it up because i was like well goddamn, can he catch a break um and I definitely connected to him more than Chiamaka because she she definitely was going through it as well but it wasn't affecting her at first as much as it was affecting Devon obviously because she was popular um, and she had money and just like her personality I just was always like come down come back down to earth miss ma'am but those are my general feelings like I still, for a debut, think it was well written. Um, the pacing sometimes was kind of off. Like it is kind of long. I feel like in the middle, it kind of gets a little slow, but then at the end, everything wraps up a bit too quickly and I still had a lot of questions. But for a debut, I think it was a really strong start. And there are just some things that I wish personally were different, but I know a lot of other people have really enjoyed. So now I'm gonna get into spoilers. So if you have not read the book, I would suggest you depart, right? Tell them to go. He said, bye. So when I filmed the podcast, I think I said that I gave it like a 3.5, I think rounded up to four. I'm still on the three to 3.5 range. Like I definitely didn't hate the book, but I just have thoughts on a lot of things. So like I said before, they're at this private high school. They're the only two black students. The only two black students. And when this starts happening, because ACES is targeting them primarily, like they do, 
spill a little information about another person but for the most part for the most part they are targeting Chiamaka and Devon and it takes them a while to get around to the notion that oh they're targeting us because we're black the only black students at the school and I was like it took y'all that long to get there like maybe Chiamaka could be in denial a little longer but Devon is he's been living more in reality so I'm like it really took y'all to get there uh took y'all to took y'all that much time to get there also I know that some people because it's pitched as get out meets gossip girl I watched get out have not watched gossip girl but watching and reading reviews I got from a lot of people that it didn't really feel as gossip girly like besides the text messages and I was expecting I guess more like more high school drama kind of instead of like this insidious plot and I didn't even think about it because I did watch Get, o Get Out a while ago. But I guess if you really do think about it, about the plot of Get Out, you'll kind of figure out how this story is going to go. I'm glad that I didn't think about it too closely because it kind of would have ruined it. Because at first, I really was thinking Aces was like a person or maybe a group of people. But I never assumed it was everybody white. Like everybody. But my main issues are that, okay, besides the pacing... I wanted more from the relationship between Devon and Chiamaka. Obviously, they're the only two black students that I does not mean they need to be besties. But once they figure out that it's only happening to them because they're black and they're going through this together, I wanted a closer relationship with them because I was like, y'all are going through this together. Y'all are trying to solve what is happening. Like, I want them to be closer. And they just weren't really up until like maybe right at the end. And that just kind of made me sad. And I know they're from different social classes and they, you know, never hung out, maybe knew of each other, but that kind of let me down. And I know that Blair Waldorf or whatever from Gossip Girl is, that's who Chiamaka is supposed to be. And I get that, but like she was getting on my nerves. So she's She's biracial. Her mother is, I think, Nigerian and her dad is from Italy. And they talk about, because they this is a high school, which going into it, I thought it was going to be a boarding school, which I wished it would have been. But it is a high school, so they go home at the end of the day. And they're talking about her family and how they never go visit her dad's family in Italy because they don't like them because they're black, essentially. And it just, like, never really is touched on beyond that. And I'm like, excuse me, what? So your daddy's not gonna stick up for y'all. He's he still goes he still goes and visits his family. But I'm like I'm sorry if we're married, we have a child. You say you love me, and your family is racist against me. No 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 no. You don't need to check them and get them right. I don't know. I don't know how. I just did not like that, and it just never was really expounded on. I just had a lot of questions. Also, some of the sto <laughs> the story, I will say that she wrote some of these characters really well because I was so enraged with them. With what's his name? the white dude was a Jamie oh my gosh what a gaslighting piece of shit I could not stand him but then some things Chiamaka realizes that you know Jamie's not really her friend and he's dating this other girl but then when I forgot what happens but they break up and then she starts dating the girl that Jamie was with and I just felt like that was weird I don't know and she goes to this girl's house uh this is a white girl and she there's like no pictures of family on the wall and then there's one and she tries to hide it and I'm like come on now you didn't think that was suspicious I knew something was up um so those were some of my issues also the whole plot with aces it turns out obviously if you're watching this maybe you've obviously read it or maybe you don't care but aces is like a decades long what do you even call it? institution I guess like that's been going on for years and years and years where they always in admit two black students like every 10 years to the school and they let them get to their senior year and then they fuck with them and start you know making them think they're crazy and all these things so they don't make it to graduation and I just don't I don't find that believable not in the sense like white people wouldn't do that but like two exactly two black students every 10 years and no one notices anything I just call I don't I don't get it I don't believe that um I know this is a fictional book but like that backstory I don't buy it and so when that re reveal kind of came along 
when they I felt kind of like let down because like the build up when they thought they were getting clues and they thought they were going to unmask the person. I was like, oh my gosh. And then when we figure it out, I'm like, eh. Okay. Like it's it's terrible, but I just feel like only two black students. Like I feel like you would invite more and you wouldn't do it so regularly as not to make it so blatant, but it was only two every 10 years and none of them graduated. Okay. Okay, whatever. I just thought that was weird. And like I said, the pacing was kind of weird. Look, at first I thought it was really well paced because the chapters are short and they do alternate from points of view from Chiamaka to Javon. Then the middle kind of gets a little murky. And I feel like once we knew the background of Aces, then it felt weird because I'm like, okay, well, what are you going to do now? I feel like there's still a lot of book left after that. Um, and then <laughs> for them to, their plan to expose this group and go to the media and they go to a white person. I'm like, you, there was no black news station like in the next town over or something you could go to and how easily she goes along with it. Like, yeah, we'll come to the, the party and we'll expose them. And I'm like, ooh, I don't feel like this is this is good. And Devon was skeptical too, but she was like, hey, no, it's fine. And then what, they were in on it too. Like, goddamn, everybody, the whole school, every white person in on it. I will tell you that. She got me though with the teacher and De Devon's best friend like those hurt those reveals like there was one scene that was so chilling because he wants to go to Juilliard he doesn't have many friends he's like this one close friend he's known for years and then he really kind of hangs out in the music room um working on his piece for Juilliard and the teacher always seems really helpful doesn't like bother him about uh attendance or being tardy or whatever and then there's this really sinister scene where he's talking to him and like, he's like, um, you're not going to get into Juilliard. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, they really care about attendance. And he's like, you said you didn't care about all these things. And it's such a, sh oh my God, I feel so bad for Devon. And he's basically explaining to him, like, I just led you on to believe all these things. I'm not going to help you. You're not getting to Juilliard. Like, and he's like, why would you do this? And he says, because I can. And I was like, I think that was the most chilling part of the book because a lot of people, white people, do these things because they can. Oh my God, I whoo, I felt that. I felt that moment so much. Um, so those reveals and then his friend, oh, that piece of shit. All the stuff that Devon's mama had done for him over the years, even though she was struggling and he still was bitter and said that Devon didn't deserve what he got and, or, you know, like didn't deserve to get to the school. He only got there because of affirmative action. I pissed so mad but I did I was I did like that I kept guessing different people like at one point I was like okay I don't trust anybody there was even a black character that Devon meets I can't remember his name and I was like oh he's suspect too like then there's a point where like his mom even seems a little shady and I'm like oh my god I don't trust anyone so I definitely felt some a lot of aspects of it did feel really page turnery, which I like in a thriller. And I ultimately, overall, I think it's a well-written book, but those pacing issues, and then we get to the end. So like I said before, I feel like we found out about who Aces was and who was behind it a little too soon. Then it felt like there was a lot of story left over. And then the ending just felt so abrupt. So Devon tweets out basically what the school has been doing is like I don't have a lot of followers a lot of people aren't going to see this goes back on Twitter later and it's like gone viral and all of these people in his town and towns over or whatever a lot of black people are tweeting you know back at him and I guess they organize kind of like a protest or something I'm not super clear on the timeline because it feels like it's like within 24 hours and they're at this ball thing or this party or whatever where they had brought the TV news station where they thought they were going to be filming this big expose on the school and then it turns out the TV people were with the school all along you know basically with aces and they save the day because of all these people who found out about it on Twitter descend on the school and they're like rioting and stuff and the school gets set on fire and then the school burns down a couple people die and that's the end of the book and then there's an epilogue and I was like what I just it just happened so quickly like they lived the school burned down a couple people died the end and I just was like whoa 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 I also felt like it would have made more sense for this to be boarding school for all of the non-help their parents gave like 
I get it. Devon's mom was working a lot, but Chiamaka's parents weren't. And like all of this stuff going on, they would never hear about it. They wouldn't talk. To, they wouldn't talk to their parents and tell them. I don't know. You know, it's a big thing in Hawaii for the parents to be very absent. But they still like went home. They still had conversations with their parents, but they never told them about the stuff that was going on. So I wish it had just been a boarding school, because. I mean, it just could have been even that more out of control because there's no parents there. And you know, the teachers are probably absent too. But yeah, I didn't, I did love that part. And then since the author is from the UK, I assumed this took place in the UK. And they, in the beginning, would start saying stuff like alluding to them not being in the UK. And I was like, hold up, why aren't they? And then they explain, it's just somewhere in the US. There's never a specific place. And she explains why in the author's note, because she thinks it's important not to tie this story to a specific place because this happens everywhere, which is valid. But I am a person who really likes locations, like explicit, even if it's made up, I want like super explicit details setting the scene. And it just was like anywhere USA and I didn't like that. And also they explained that the school is very much modeled after a UK uh, school. So they use headmaster and prefects. And I was like, it just could have been a boarding school. Like, I don't know. Some things were weird. Like the one kid, his name was Jamie Fitzjohn. And I'm like, you mean Fitzpatrick, Fitzgerald? Like I've never heard the name Fitzjohn and I just thought that was terrible. Like no so those are just small nitpicky things to me but I think and I think some other people discussed this too was just I know these things happen like maybe not to this degree well anyway you know racism is real microaggressions um people do things because they hold power over other people especially white people holding power over black and brown people I know that happens but sometimes I just don't want to read it in a book. And so I thought this was just going to be more, I haven't seen Gossip Girl, but I just thought it would be more like lighthearted drama instead of such deep seated hatred and bigotry. Um, and you know, it's not even drama. And so, like I said, I wanted to read the story initially, but then I always like, was like, oh, to pick it up because I knew it wasn't going to be enjoyable. I just always felt anxious for them. I was always worried about what was gonna happen next, like what other thing was gonna come down on them because it literally nothing good happens for them until I guess the very end. And obviously in the epilogue, they've gone on to do good things because I don't know, is it 15, 16 years in the future? But I just wanted more rich, drama like a gossip girl but with black people that's what I thought it was going to be and I would I would love that story I don't know if it exists or maybe someone else will write it because it I don't these I don't know I don't want to say the story isn't important and not necessary but I just think it just doesn't always have to be a story about black people suffering I don't know I don't I don't know if that's fair to say. I just want, like, I would love a kind of, I would love it still to be dark academia murder mystery at a boarding school, primarily black students, but like it not be racially motivated, like the crime, because in a lot of dark academia stories, there's usually majority white students, there's some kind of crime or whatever, but it's it's rarely like a racially motivated thing. And I would just like that, you know, like just take out the racism aspect because it's exhausting, you know, like maybe to me, because I we experience it in real life, it's everywhere currently, you know, um, maybe to non-black people, it's not as exhausting to read that because it's not a lived experience, but I just, I just wanted it to be, I still dark, but not the darkness have to be the white people taking down the black people. Like I just didn't want that. So that's why I didn't love it, but I can understand why people really love the story. Um, again, an excellent debut and I definitely will read the next book that she puts out. I know she's already working on that story. And again, if you haven't read it, I think you should read her author's note. It is incredible that she started this story at 18 when she started university and finished it um, right around graduating. Amazing, okay? Because I, at my big age, still can't write a damn story. So, oh my gosh. 
Nigel, oh my god, oh. impressive, but it just wasn't, a, it wasn't a five star for me, like I was hoping, like it was from some other people, for those reasons, and then the end is very, or the prologue at least, is like in the future, 15, 16 years, and they have succeeded in their careers or whatever, they're still friends, and I, um, there's like a, kind of almost like an underground railroad, but like an underground society that they head to help children who are applying to these elite schools to like let them know, I guess, like, hey, those schools racist or like keep an eye on them or something. I can't remember exactly. And I'm very interested in that. Like I would like, I would be interested in a book following that when they're older, like what exactly does that do? Like why haven't they just created a school for these students instead so they don't have to still go to these predominantly white institutions? I have questions so I I don't know if she did that on purpose to leave room for a possible like follow-up maybe not exactly I guess it would be a sequel or spin-off maybe or if it's just a one and done I don't know I'd be interested to read the next one if there was another book directly related to this story uh, but those are my feelings about Ace of Spades I still I'm very happy for her excited to see what she does next but this one didn't hit for me like I was hoping. So I would love to know your thoughts on this story down below. And if you feel similar about the kind of like the black pain, the black struggle in stories, I don't know. I know it's important and, and sometimes it has to be in a story, but sometimes I also feel like we don't need it. You know, like it is fiction. Let me live. Let me pretend there's a world where these black people are at this posh school and it's all black people and maybe there's two white people and there's no racism just let me live it's fiction give me a make it up the rules don't apply to you <laughs> unless you're doing historical fiction i guess <sighs> those are just my thoughts but poor sweet devon chiamaka did you know grow on me towards the end but for the most part was like cannot relate to you ma'am and i still want to know about your racist ass daddy well not him, but his family but like how can you not stand up for your wife and your daughter i don't understand that I'm trying to think. I feel like I'm probably forgetting something, but those in general were my thoughts. While editing, if I remember something, I'll pop it in, but I don't want to chance it and I think my phone's gonna die. So that's gonna be it for me. And no video is ever complete without me thanking my amazing patrons. Shout out to Bebe's besties, Danielle, Katie, Bobby, Jen, Kristen, Leo, Kate, Terry, Emily, Jesse, Janine, Sarah, Pepper, Shannon, Kirsten, Elisabetta, Amber, Heidi, Maria, and Serena. And of course, the Night of Andrea stands, Maya, Rosie, Ava, Claire, Carrie, Tyrell, Demery, Rainey, and Celine. And thank you so much to the friends and admirers of Bay Bay. I love you all. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to join my Patreon, it is linked down below as well as other resources, ways to support my channel. If you ever want to, you know, I have uh, affiliate links, whatever down there, uh, links to my social media, and that is it. Also, small note that merch is, well, merch is currently paused because I'm just having an issue and I might have to switch from Teespring, who I was using. Um, so there, there's not a link to merch currently right now. I do apologize, but I, you know, I just, having some issues right now but that is it nigel fell asleep come here what did i ask you at the beginning of the video do you want to film a video about this book i read he said only if i get to eat the microphone other than that mind your business he is so rude but so cute look at him look at him come on tell people hello Tell him okay, I guess he ain't got time for y'all today. Do you? Okay. Well, he said hello, and we both say thank you. Thank you for all your love and support. Please give this video a thumbs up. Think about subscribing, hit that notification bell so you will be notified when we post a video. And uh, that's it. So we'll see you in our. Oh, wait! Stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. We'll see you in our next one. Bye!